In this video, we'll get an introduction to the field of scientific computing through an example scientific computing problem. After studying this video, you should be able to describe the field of scientific computing. Also, you should be able to perform a parametric analysis of an algebraic mathematical model using MATLAB. And you should also know what parametric analysis means. We'll get to that in a second. And lastly, you should be able to communicate the results of your analysis with a graph. So what is scientific computing? The term scientific computing refers in general to the use of software tools by the science and engineering community to study mathematical models, process and analyze data, and develop and study the tools themselves. And many of the tools have underlying them numerical methods, which are main focus of Engineering 240. So let's look at an example problem to get a better feel for what we mean by scientific computing. So in this example we'll be studying a mathematical model with a parametric analysis. Consider the following empirical model for the population of contaminants in a body of water. Here we have some population P that's a total concentration of contaminants in parts per million and it's equal to a naught e to the negative kat plus b naught e to the negative kbt, where a naught and b naught are initial concentrations of two different contaminants a and b, and ka and kb are their decay rates. A parametric, a parametric analysis studies how the behavior of the mathematical model changes as one or more model parameters are changed. The results are generally presented graphically. So for example, in a parametric analysis, we would be looking at any of these model parameters and seeing how changing them affects the overall behavior of the model. So just to review from the mathematical models video, the parameters we can consider are A0, Ka, B0, and Kb. Those are all our parameters. Our independent variable is T. And our dependent variable in this model is P. So let's use MATLAB to look at how sensitive the model is to the decay rate of species B. So basically what we want to do is vary KB and see what changes. So the first thing we might do is generate a plot. We'll generate a graph where we have values of Ka and our other parameters that we fix at certain values. Usually this would be based off real life. And then we're going to vary that fourth parameter, Kb, and in this case we are varying that for four cases. And for each of those cases, generating a graph of the contaminant concentration as a function of time. I've also indicated a standard here. Perhaps we're interested in seeing how quickly these contaminants decay to reach a 10 part per million standard. One example situation where we might be interested in something like this is suppose we're an environmental engineer looking to improve the water quality in a lake and hit that 10 part per million standard. These two organisms, A and B, fall under that standard. And we found that by adding certain chemicals to the lake, maybe to change the pH a little bit, we can affect the decay rate of Kb. And we want to see how that improves the overall time or decreases the time it takes for this contamination to reach the standard. So first graph like this kind of gives us some picture of how that model behavior changes. So let's look at how we use MATLAB to make that graph. And just a reminder, before you watch this video, you want to make sure you watch some of those MATLAB basics videos because I'm assuming you've already gone through those videos. So here's the MATLAB code 
to first generate the data from the model. So the first thing we'll do in generating a graph on MATLAB is we need to generate some data to graph. So looking here, the top section is the help comments. As I mentioned in the basics videos, these comments show up when we look for help on this code that we've written. Here we've set some initial variable values of the parameters, including our four cases for KB. And then I've used LinSpace to set up a vector of T values, and I'm using the default 100 values of t and the reason I do that is to get a smooth curve in the plot. Then what we'll do is go through the four different values of kb to generate results for p. So here's our four cases. In each case all that's changing is which value of kb are we using to calculate the model. Once we've generated all this data we can move on in the code. I've kept the line numbers here. You'll see we're here at 26. And now moving forward to generate the graph, call the figure. Here we'll generate an overlay plot with four data series. And I'll turn the hold on because I'm going to use another plot command here to put in that uh, standard. And the rest here is just annotating the plot. And you generally want to include annotations on any plot to tell what tell the story that that graph is telling. So one thing I would encourage you to do is download this M file from the video folder and you can run it in MATLAB and uh, play with it and see change things and see what happens. Maybe try studying a different parameter in the model. But let's look at something else that we might want to do. Let's say we've looked at this graph and we say, well, what I really want to know, I'm really interested in this. I'm interested in well, how does the time it takes to reach that standard? I can see that it's about three seconds or three days for uh, KB equals two and KB equals five. And then all of a sudden it increases as KB gets beyond, uh, gets smaller than two. And I really want to look at that situation. So maybe I would like to do something like generate a graph showing how the time it takes for the standard to be reached depends on KB. So I'm thinking about something like this, right, where I know the standard, call it PS for the standard, that's equal to A naught minus KAT plus B naught E to the negative KBT. And what I want to do here is plot now I'll call that the TS and I want to plot TS versus KB and to follow the same approach that we used we need to solve our, our equation for TS and then we might be able to generate some plot where we have the time to reach the standard as a function of KB and we know that the uh, from our previous results we, we expect some sort of some sort of uh, curve that looks like that because we know as KB increased the time to reach the standard decreased um, but it did hit some sort of limit so we would expect to see that so let's try solving that equation so if we wanted to solve that for TS, uh, we need to get that T out of the exponentials. The first thing we might do is take the natural log of both sides. Missed the E there.
and uh, we're kind of stuck because there's no way to simplify that right hand side and we can't we need to separate these and uh, it's not possible and this actually gives motivation for our first numerical method and we'll cover that in it in the next video but the way to solve this is to formulate this as a roots problem and tackle it that way so we'll get to that next week and that concludes this video